Hello everyone, welcome to another Mix Tank Live on PureMix.com. My name is Mark Abrams and I'm here every other Monday at 2.30 p.m. Eastern to go over mixes on Mix Tank. What is Mix Tank? Great question, I'm glad you asked. Mix Tank is this. So this is Mix Tank on PureMix and basically users can upload their mixes. Uh, PureMix members can upload their mixes and get feedback from the community uh, and I come on and uh, also drop comments, but the entire PureMix community can, can chip in. So during this live stream, I'm gonna have you guys up here in the chat and I'm encouraging everybody to, uh, to watch the comments in the chat because a lot of times mix feedback that comes in there is very, very useful. Uh, so this is a, a group effort here. So I'll be dropping my comments and you guys drop yours as well. Um, we're gonna be starting off with Mike Ornsby's track. Mike, let us know that he's got this one in here. If you're a PureMix member and you submitted a mix for today's Mix Tank Takeover, make sure you let me know your username and the song name up in the comments, and I'll make sure that we get to it before we get out of here. All right. Uh, so I'm going to start from the beginning here, and let's check it out. Here we go. Thank you. 
Awesome. Okay, I'm going to pop my headphones out. He felt like it was a better binaural mix and wouldn't likely sound well over stereo speakers, so that's why I popped in the AirPods. Um, why AirPods? Uh, I've been... I've been, one, I've been loving these. They're the new generation of the AirPod Pros. Um, as Fab calls them, they're the AirPod Pro Pros. Um, but uh, I've been liking them, actually. And then, two, everybody in the world has these things now. So it's, it just seems like a good reference point. But uh, anyway, Mike, I think it sounds awesome, uh, per usual. The only thing that I would say is just like what Tom said, like I just kind of wanted to hear more of that pulse uh, from the drums. But I literally have nothing else for this one. Um, I was thinking about some of the low end of the thunder, but honestly, it felt immersive, like what you intended it to do. So I, I really don't have anything on this. I think it's really, really well done. It's, it put me in a mood and it's awesome. I love it. Uh, sorry, I, I could try and think of things, but I don't think that that's the point. So great job. Um, I, yeah, I think just, uh, the pulse of the drums and that's it for me. Um, very cool. Always fun to listen to your stuff. Thanks. Thanks again for being here and for submitting something. This is great. So, uh, also, um, Mike, let everybody know how you release this stuff if you release it too, because I feel like a playlist of, of your material would be something that'd be really fun to have on, like just playing in a room while like cooking or something like that. So, uh, I'd love to hear where to like find your, find your new stuff. Uh, awesome. Okay. Uh, yeah, nice. Tony says, uh, uh, me too. And wow, I just looked out my window to see if it was raining. He had his headphones in too. Awesome. Okay. And speaking of Tony, uh, we're going to do your song next, Tony. Um, and also, uh, publicly saying, um, I got your email and I'm sorry, I haven't gotten back to you yet, but I will get those comments over to you. Uh, so yeah, thank you for sending that and I'll, I'll get right back to you on it. Um, well, I suppose right back to you would have been responding earlier, but I will get back to you on it. Uh, I'll try and do it after the stream today, actually. Okay, so, uh, I only want to be with you, cover. Um, yeah, that goes the same uh, for anybody, too. If, if you guys have questions about anything that I say on here about your track, any of my comments about your track, if you want to email me, it's mark at and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Okay, so there we go. There's Tony's. And... This is I Only Want to Be With You cover. And I wonder if this is the U2 song. Excited to hear this. Okay, here we go. I don't know what it is that makes me love you so. I only know I never want to let you go. Cause you started something Oh, can't you see That ever since we met You've had a hold on me It happens to be true I only want to be with it doesn't matter where you go or what you do I want to spend each moment of the day with you Well, look what has happened with just one I don't 
Awesome, Tony. Um, I love the production in this. And uh, so you said over here, this is the first mix of the song uh, for sync. And you're trying to be both dramatic um, with fake cello and violin tempted in and intimate, the vocals soft and breathy. And in general, any suggestions on what needs to be done to take it out of the demo zone to make it pitchable? Cheers, Tony. So um, the only thing that I hear that is uh, sort of demo mode well the biggest thing i hear about it that's demo mode is the the phase of the um the main pad that's kind of like sparkly so i did a couple checks and like summed it down to mono on there uh and that completely disappears along with some of the other elements that are in there so the vocal doesn't feel like it's super spread out to me but um there's other elements like synths and stuff like that that do feel like they are um just out of phase and spread too far like with a uh, stereo widening or something so um that's something to look at is uh checking your mix in mono while you're while you're mixing and i have um a couple suggestions for that so i'm looking to see if it's still on the app store but there is an app for your phone that's super handy and i um tony i know i've asked you this before but i at least i think i have um you're mixing on speakers, I believe, right? Uh, let me know in the chat and confirm that. Okay, so there is a um, there is an app on the App Store. I don't know if it's on Android or not. It's not the fanciest app in the world, but it's called Speaker Angle. And I'll try and show it to you guys here. We'll see if you can see my screen. So there's a head and there's two speakers. You can kind of vaguely make that out. Basically what, what you do is you put your phone on your speaker and you tap the speaker that you're on and then as you tilt it, it'll tell you the angle that you're at and I don't think I can demonstrate that but you'll just have to take my word for it. So as you kind of like tilt your phone while it's sitting on top of the monitor, um, it'll tell you the degree that it's, that it's angled at. So one angle to start with, like um, you can definitely look up on the internet recommended angles and all of that. Uh, particularly in stereo, I think one of the big recommendations is 30 degrees. Uh, it's usually like 20 to 45, according to the app thing. Um, so you can kind of play with what sounds good and what sounds good in your room. But, uh, the main thing that I'm hearing is, uh, let's see, I'm looking to see if you're on speakers. Yeah, no, no answer yet. So, um, the main thing is that your speakers are at the same angle and more importantly too, maybe not more importantly, but um that they're at the same distance from you so if you are sitting in the listening position and you take a tape measure i don't have one right now but extend it out to the tweeter you know see if what that distance is extend it out to the other tweeter make sure that that's the same distance so that those speakers are sitting on the same plane that's going to uh, give you an accurate depiction of the center image and then you're going to hear stuff like things that are wildly outside of the spectrum very easily um i yeah, speakers and headphones. Okay, cool. So, uh, I I think that there's probably something going on with your with your monitors where you're not hearing the phasey stuff. The other thing um, with hearing phantom center, if you have the monitors placed correctly and everything's behaving as it should, you should have a nice punchy center. Um, one of the things that I'm hearing about, like speaking of demo mode, um, there's not a nice punch coming from the center. There's not a lot of transient happening. And uh, it can definitely affect how you're reacting to the vocal and all of that as well. So I hear a little bit of a low mid buildup in the vocal and especially in the reverb of that vocal. Um, and I think that there's just things in the monitoring environment that, that you're not hearing that are um, just kind of creating some of those anomalies or those problems, especially ones like, um, like having an element that would be so out of phase that it would cancel down in mono. If your monitors are kind of placed correctly, if your room's good, if you have like some absorption treatment around the room and things are kind of working right, you would hear that 
sort of uh, effect very quickly and be able to adapt for it. Um, other than that, uh, I think you did a great job on this and the vibe of the mix is there. I would just solve some of the things like it not summing down to mono, especially for sync, because uh, for all the obvious reasons. But if you think about like if this was in a movie trailer or something like that and it got played back as is on a mono system or one where the stereo system was like wildly out of whack, you might not hear the sparkly thing at all. And you would just have vocal up the center with kind of a flat sounding kick drum sort of thing in there. Um, so basically making sure that sync music also corresponds down to other formats, uh, I think is a little bit more important than normal um, with stuff. Some people might uh, not worry about it too much, but I think for sync, I would be more conscious about things folding down to mono. Uh, that doesn't mean that a, a musical um, director would be worried about that per se, but I think it's probably a good thing to watch out for. Other than that, I think it's really good. Uh, I noticed some lip smacking and, and lip noises in the vocal, but I would kind of leave it as is because it adds to the intimacy of that vocal. Uh, and I think it's really good. So awesome. Uh, cool. Sorry, I was looking for speaker angle on the phone. Nice. Um, but yeah, basically, it's just like 30 to 45 degrees. And I think that that's something that you just got to kind of play with and, and see what you like. But um, 30 is a good starting point. Uh, I think that mine are at 30. And I'm super happy. But... Uh, yeah, it's just, just something to play with. Uh, they have on Amazon, you can buy laser uh, levels that they sit on a tripod and you make sure it's level. You put it in your listening position and then with it has like a little angle protractor thing on it and you can turn it to 30 degrees and it'll blast a line on your wall and then you can be like, oh, okay, I need to put my speaker there and then make sure that it's the same distance on the front wall, like left and right. So the, the tweeter is the same distance to your front wall as on the left as it is on your right. But that's something that you can accomplish in, you know, pretty quickly in like 15 minutes. It might not be like the most thorough thing, but you can get there pretty quick with it. Uh, so I hope that helps. Awesome. Uh, what about correlation scale on plugins? Um, useful, uh, but I think I, I think that you would see that particular sound, like especially if you soloed that and looked at a phase meter on there, you would probably see it swinging wildly to the left on there. Um, just noting that it's, you know, kind of out of phase and all that, but definitely if you just sum down to mono, you're going to hear those things just kind of fold away and disappear. Uh, if you don't have a monitor controller that'll sum down to mono, you can do the same thing. Like if you're in pro tools, um, and you're going to like a print track or you're going to an aux with pan pots on it, uh, you could just put those pan pots right up the center. Uh, same if you're, you know, in any W or DAW, just find something that'll put it up the center and, if that's outside of your workflow, I know Plugin Alliance has a free plugin called BX Solo. It's BX underscore Solo. And I believe that that plugin has a mono button on it. So you can just put that on your master as like the last thing in the chain and then hit the mono button and it'll collapse the left and right down to the center. So that might help as well. Awesome. All right. Uh, hey, C Rose. Good to see you. Awesome to see everybody in here. ATN, you're back. Awesome. Dr. Kev's in the house. We got Christoph Bax, Smoking Fudo, Mike Ornsby. I saw um, Isomatics up there. Kenneth Wright's tuning in from Saturn. This is super cool. It's good to see everybody. Juan's here. Martin, good to see you. Okay, uh, let's see. So if you're just joining us, make sure that you put your song in the chat. If you haven't already, and uh, we'll get to it before we get out of here. Our next one is from Victory Risen called Untitled. Okay, let me just try the username. Maybe I spelled it wrong. Try Victory, and let's try Untitled. There we go. I got it. All right. Over on the right side, we have our comments here. So it says advanced mix, uh, first time submitting a mix for review. Hey, Mark. Hey. <laughs> and I'd like to get thoughts on style. Do these rock electronic elements mix well together? How the drums are mixed? I feel good, but not like they're exactly right. And any other elements that stand out? I'd appreciate to hear if anything's clearly wrong. All thoughts and comments are welcome since I'm always learning to get better. Note, there's a big hole in the middle of the mix for vocals to sit. So consider this a work in progress. Cool. With those pending. Looking for feedback mostly on the track itself. Awesome. Okay. We'll talk about that in a second. Here we go.
Ooh, I love that that distortion sound at the end there. Like it's cutting out. Um, big fan of germanium fuzz. Uh, that just sounds like it's dying when it gets started for signal. So that's super cool. Um, awesome job, man. Cool. So uh, again, important note. Uh, he's left a hole in the mix for the vocals. They're not in the mix yet. Uh, so I want to talk about about that, and then we'll talk about some of the things in particular on the mix. Um, kind of all related, actually. So uh, in general, I think all of your tones are pretty cool. Um, there's uh, nice, good good comments in the chat here. Uh, Ciro says, the panning feels great. Smoking Fudo says, reminds me of some Black uh, Rebel Motorcycle Club vibes. Very nice. Yeah. Um, it, it like transports me to a mood as is, especially without the vocal to be like, what's the song about and what's what's happening in the story and all of that. The vibe is all there in the song, which is really cool. I want to talk about mixing without a vocal in, though. Um, so how loud are things? How do the drums sound? How loud should the guitars be? How much space should there be? All of these things are related to the story of the vocal and the tone of the vocal, the performance of it. Um, all of them are related to that for me. So uh, where you put the vocal in, there's a lot of different feelings about where to put the vocal in uh, in the course of a mix. And I think everybody's kind of a little bit different. It's a personal choice thing. Uh, I try to get the vocal in pretty much as early as possible. Not the first thing. I'll usually work on drums first and, and kind of go through all of my tracks and get an idea of how it's going, uh, what all the parts in the song are. If I haven't, if I didn't produce the song and I just got it to mix, I'll go through and like listen to every part. Um, I'll listen to the rough first so I have an idea of what's going on the, with the vocal anyway. But when I uh, sort of get through things, I usually after like drums and bass, I'll at least start putting the vocal in once in a while to kind of hear where it's at. And uh, the reason for that for me is it tells you so much about the balance of all the other tracks. Uh, for example, the kick and the snare and the drums in general on this track, uh, on this mix that you submitted, the kick is one of the loudest elements in the track. Uh, same with the snare. They're both... They have nice punch and they have nice tone and they're up the um, hitting nice up the center, but they're shifting forward in the space uh, because of their volume uh, more so than the guitars. So um, as anybody who's been on the show like more than one week knows, like I, I talk about volume and balance in terms of depth. So I think of my speakers as my front wall and um, right now, like the way that the balance is, I hear the kick and the snare out in front of the speakers. And that might be something, again, depending on taste, uh, thinking about like how loud should the vocal be? Well, how close to you should it be, right? Um, obviously, louder equals closer. And I think that that's going to end up radically changing the decisions that you make with the kick and the snare and all of that. And then also tonally, uh, if you need to make more room uh, for, that, for that vocal, then you'll end up kind of carving things up differently. Right now... In terms of, uh, you asked how the drums are mixed, um, so and you f said you feel good, but like they're not exactly right. I hear a little bit of like a 80 to 100 hertz buildup in the kick drum, especially where it's like a little bit fat. Um, the tone of it's nice, but it's a little big and uh, more. It's kind of encompassing the bass a little bit. It's kind of eating it up a little bit uh, to the point where like that whole area has just got a little bit of a bump in it. Um, and that might be something to look at. Uh, again, I think that that's going to change once you get the vocal in. The cymbals are sort of leaning in front of the mix to me. So uh, typically, like, if the high end of a source is a lot louder than, like, say, like the low mid of a source, I'll kind of think of it as leaning forward out of the speaker. So uh, if you were looking at your speaker from the side, so say that, like, this is the tweeter, this is the side of the speaker, uh, so front of the speaker, back of the speaker, the cymbals sound like they're kind of doing one of these. Um, so sorry to talk with my hands again, but um, yeah, so they sound like they're just kind of leaning forward a little bit out of the mix to me. So it might be something to decide, like, do you want them to sound so close mic'd or is this more of an ambient piece where that part of the kit, the, the cymbals and everything like that should feel like they're a part of the picture in the back of the mix, um, just kind of creating more of an ethereal vibe. Right now, the cymbals sound like they're very close to me. Uh, closer than the guitars do. Uh, other than that, though, the vibe is totally there. And I think, um, again, once you put the vocal in, I think a lot of these things will reveal themselves to you. And when you do put the vocal in, try um, 
try doing it without other elements in there. So like just mixing the vocal in, say with like the, the drums and the bass and kind of aligning that balance and then bringing the guitars up to the point where they like accentuate what you want the, the picture to be with the vocal in there and just kind of like painting and filling things in. Again, I really think in terms of like depth front to back, especially with volume and uh, EQ things in terms of that um, slant that I was telling you about. So uh, yeah, once you get the vocal in and everything and you start pushing the guitars up, where do you want those to sit? Are they on the same plane as the vocal? Are they further back from the vocal? That kind of stuff. But I think you did a great job on the track. The vibe's all there. It feels really cool. Uh, it'll be neat to see what happens with it. And it also works as an instrumental piece, honestly. Uh, it's it's kind of cool. So, all right. Very cool. Uh, let's see. I got some more in here. Ciro says, banger for me. Nice. It was a banger. Okay. Next one up is Remnants of My Past with Gord. And then after that, I see Jesse Bouvier with uh, Rapture. Awesome. Tortilla Man's cat is very hungry. Tortilla Man, your cat's hungry every single week. Every single week. <laughs> awesome. Okay, uh, you need to feed your cat. So next song, let's find Gord. And here we go.
Awesome. I'm just going to check one more thing. Okay, what I was listening for there was a snare punch, uh, so we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, Gord, great job. This mix sounds really, really cool, and it's exciting, and all of the things. Um, as always, I agree with everything that Tom says. <laughs> um, Tom is awesome. Uh, Tom Foolery, for those who don't know, is Fab's assistant um, and works at Flux Studios in New York with Fab, uh, and he's awesome. He chimes in on almost every mix on Mix Tank. Uh, he's our plant, per se. Uh, so, yeah, definitely Tom always has good feedback. Uh, I agree with him about um, the top end brightness, and he nailed it with Tom Petty's Wildflowers album being a good example of bright mixes that work well. That album is bright, but it never gets harsh. It's a really, really good album. Uh, it's just a good album in general. Um, but, yeah, anyway, that's a good good reference point. Uh, the thing that sounds bright specifically in the mix for me, Gord, is in the vocal, there's like a 2 to 4K-ish excitement um, that you can hear on the gravelly part of your voice that's pushing it forward. And it almost sounds like uh, Sugar. Um, sugar has some processing on it that sounds like that. And if you push it too far, it can start to do what I was talking about earlier about making, you know, this is the side of the speaker. The vocal starts to lean forward out of the speaker and jump out a little bit just at that range. Uh, it makes it very intimate and exciting, but feels like it might be a little bit past the point of like sitting in the mix well, but um, preference, I suppose, as well. But that was something that jumped out to me. Uh, the other thing was verse good, uh, verse two, the guitar on the right. That's uh, I think it's got some hammer on parts going on it. Uh, that guy sounded a little bit thin and recessed to me. Um, it sounded distant due to the lack of the low mids in there. There wasn't very much body around that guitar and uh, sounded like it was recessed back in the image. So again, speaking about brightness, if you think about how something sounds when it's closer to you, it has a little bit more body to it uh, versus if something's far away and it just sounds more like high mids um, or mids, depending on your definition of low and high mids and all that. But uh, So that guy felt like it was missing a little bit of body to me. Um, and other than those two things, I was listening for things like punch. So Tom mentioned that he felt like uh, the limiter might be working a little bit hard here. If you're going to mastering, you might not need it, although sometimes the limiter is a big part of the mix. I just had a situation last weekend um, where I listened to a mix without a limiter on it from somebody, and the mix was completely different. It was like a totally different mix, so sometimes the mix falls apart with that. But you might be able to back it off a little bit and get some more punch back in those things. The kick drum and snare drum specifically I was listening to, as well as the bass guitar. So in the end, I wasn't hearing much of the snare drum. I wasn't feeling like the transient center punch from it. And when I say center punch, I'm talking about like the, fan the phantom center on my stereo speakers. I'd like to feel some transient coming from those and feel like they're punchy and not like it's just a flat snare that's um, sitting there. So if your limiter's not causing that and you have a compressor on it you could try slowing the attack time down on it and letting some more of that initial transient come through for the punch uh, watch what happens to the limiter after you do that if you do have a limiter pushing things hard because more of that snare transient will be getting in there and it might cause it to do some weird things so listen for it uh, and then the other one was on the bass guitar i wanted to hear more definition from note to note and more of the punch the transient action of his fingers, you know, pushing on the bass guitar and all that. Uh, so same thing again, if you have a compressor on there, just slow down the attack time and let a little bit more of that punch come through. If you have too much, jumps out of the speaker front to back, right? If you have, um, if you let, I'm sorry, if you have too slow of an attack, it'll jump out of the speakers. If you have too fast of an attack, it just sits there like a parked flat pancake. And if you find a good spot in the middle, you got a little bit of center punch, but it stays in its place which is cool. So, uh, yeah, I hope that that helps. Awesome song again. I love the lyrics on there too. Uh, it was really fun, especially like in verse two, verse three, um, was getting sucked into the story. So very cool. Thanks for submitting that. Very cool. Uh, Ah, Christ of Back says, thank you, Tony. I didn't know the original was Dusty Springfield. I was wondering who the original was on that too. Um, good to know. All right. Uh, let's see here. Right. Juan says, hi, Mark, lights out. It's just rock and roll. Okay, so let me add that one to the list. I think that's next, actually. 
Let me see. Did I miss one? Oh, yeah, Rapture from Jesse. So we're going to do Jesse's Rapture. Let me just write this on my list. Rapture. And then after that one, we're going to go Lights Out. It's just rock and roll. Guys, if you're just joining us um, and you submitted a mix today, it's just rock and roll. Uh, if you're just joining us and you submitted a mix on Mix Tank that you'd like me to review, let me know the name of the song and your username in the chat, and we'll get to it before we get out of here. Thanks, everybody, for being here. This is always a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, very cool. So let's see. Ah, perfect. Uh, C. Rose has one in here. So here we go. This is C. Rose. Dot A B. We'll get to that one. Rev Noir. Okay, wonderful. Let's see what else we got. Etienne said the singer reminds me of Iggy Pop. Yeah, that's a good point. Gord, did you sing that one? Uh, curious about it. Is I think that that's your voice. If I remember right from other songs, it's really cool. Okay. Nice. Okay, uh, Tony said on that, on Gord's song, I'm watching Decibel, the standalone app, when songs play, and I noticed the 2 to 4K jumping each time on the vocals, FYI, in case you have a problem hearing it. Cool. All right. Um, nice. Thanks, Lack of Gravity. Awesome. Uh, and Analog from Value. Uh, let's see. Analog Value. Cool. All right. We got our next couple songs in the queue. Oh, you did sing it. Nice. Okay, great. Uh, apparently, you sound like Iggy Pop, which is a good thing, in my opinion. All right. Let's try Jesse's The Rapture. Next song is... Oh, there we go. Rapture from Jesse. Here we go. Who will have the final say? It always ends up this way But something's got to give before we break Maybe we can make Is this it? Do we run? Do we stay? When it all goes up in smoke Will this unravel unprovoked? Oh, are we angels or are we ghosts? Is this it? Have we lost all hope? I think I'll have a breakdown I'm beginning to find a way I think we're on to something I'll keep bending it till it breaks This could be the rapture Something tells me it's a game All the promises we make But don't you think it's in our best to play Is the same? Will we ever be the same? I think I'll have a breakdown I'm beginning to find a way I think we're on to something I'll keep bending it till it breaks When it all comes crashing down Will you leave it be around? Haven't we been broken before? Maybe this could
this way But something's got to give before we break Is the same Do we run, do we stay I think I'll have a breakdown now I'm beginning to find a way I think we're on to something I'll keep building it to the grave I think I'll have a breakdown now I'm beginning to find a way I think we're on to something now I'll keep building it to the grave This could be the rapture Jesse, if I'm remembering right, you submitted another song a couple of weeks ago that we all freaked out about. Um, you're a fantastic writer. This is really, really cool stuff. Uh, yeah, I love it. Very cool. Uh, lots of good comments about it in the chat as well. Sweet. Okay. Um, Smoking Pudo has one. Nice. Uh, so let me rate some of these new ones that came in down. And then we're going to get to the comments. And the other one was Thomas Kramer. Awesome. All right, I got you guys in. Uh, okay, yeah, great, great job on the on the writing of this. It's very cool. The um, so you wrote a couple things over in the right. Uh, so it was the final master of the song. It's off in the world and all of that. But you wanted to get it in front of our ears and see if we had any notes on the mix or the balance. Uh, it said you took Tom Foolery's earlier note and cut some of the low end of the vocal and it fits much better. And then Tom wrote, for my taste, the vocal's a little bit loud, after he said cool sounding, of course. Uh, the, so he said the vocal's a little loud and that seems to be partially because of the more mid-range forward tone. Stylistically, I like the idea, but the vocals feel a little pointy around the 1K K area now to me. So I was still hearing a little bit of the low bump that um, Tom must have commented on before. It sounded like it was down, but there was a resonance in the bottom of the vocal. And then if you cut some of that low end, now the 1K is starting to you know kind of push forward. So uh, that can happen very quickly when the vocal is over compressed, which this one does feel over compressed to me. Uh, stylistically, I understand why you would want that. I was thinking um, if you had done the vocal compression in parallel it might have allowed the vocal to feel a little bit more natural while still getting you some of that energy from getting like the 1176 smashed vocal kind of thing going um, and you wouldn't be fighting with frequency quite as much one interesting thing that you guys will see in a video that's coming out this friday with joe ciccarelli um, mixing a, a song from a band called the districts uh, Joe does a lot of EQ on his parallel buses and your mileage may vary there, but if you, sometimes if you, um, EQ the parallel bus, you have less problems with like resonant frequencies poking out because you have a, a less dynamic vocal. So you can do things like add body to the, to the parallel and stuff like that, where, uh, you would be boosting a lot of resonance in the drivers and the vocal. But anyway, you guys will see Joe talk about that and he'll do a great job of it. Um, but yeah, I was thinking this one feels a little bit smashed and had you, if you were cutting low into the vocal, it's just going to cause the vocal to kind of do one of these because it's not really going to get, you know, the, the volume drop from just being like a, a volume or an EQ dip on an uncompressed vocal. Uh, so it can cause other problems, I guess is the point that I'm trying to make. Um, the vocal felt very loud to me in the beginning and then it got sucked into the track as more elements came in and the limiting and everything started biting down on it. It was kind of pushing the vocal back into the sauce a little bit. Uh, so in the beginning, I kind of wanted to hear all of the stuff that was happening behind the vocal come forward a little bit and, and bring some of those elements to wrap around the vocal. Uh, although having an intimate vocal like that at the beginning can definitely be cool to suck the listener in. It felt like it was a little bit too much, too drastic. You know, like if you had a percentage meter, you might knock it back to like 80% instead of like 120%, whatever that means. Uh, so the backbeat, um, before 204, the backbeat that's happening, the snare, was out of phase uh, left to right. So you were trying to spread it out and it caused some phasing issues. I checked it in mono, the backbeat went away, which totally messes with the groove. So watch out on your widening uh, with stuff. If you need to widen something, 
but still want to retain some center punch, you can mess with like host delays, uh, short reverb times, very, very short reverb times. And then also uh, micro pitch things like uh, sound toys, micro shift, uh, even tides. Um, Ah, oh, the famous one. Why am I not? I'm blanking on that. The H3000. Uh, you can mess with like an H3000 on there. Uh, Studio D chorus from Universal Audio, which is like a Roland Dimension D or any Dimension D plugin. Uh, some of those things can help you widen the snare without having the same phase issues uh, from the process that you're using. Uh, once in a while, it felt like it was going back to mono, like that processing was removed. And it felt good then. And then the other thing I had was the percussion and the drums felt like they were all sitting in front of the vocals. So uh, vocals are very forward. The percussion feels like it's forward in comparison because the percussion's much brighter than the vocals. It's, it's actually pretty bright um, to my taste overall. Uh, and that causes it to kind of jump out of the speakers. It feels kind of 3D, which is cool, but it's also um, very bright and kind of in my face. And I'm struggling to hear some of the other elements that are lower in volume and further back in the mix. Uh, let's see. The other thing I had was back on the vocal. Um, if you wanted to get more dialed into that 1K thing that Tom's talking about, you can use like an EQ, kind of like the Fab Filter EQ, or any EQ where you can solo a band, listen to that range of uh, frequencies. And then after you come out of solo, your ear is going to be like hyper dialed into it. So you might overcompensate, but uh, it, it's a really good way to kind of like hear these frequency ranges and get dialed into like. Okay, so if the comment was that things are leaning forward in the mid-range, let me dial my ear in to more of what that batch of frequency sounds like so that I know when I hear it in the future. That can be a useful tool. Um, Jesse, great writing as always. Uh, if you wrote this, I, I'm just kind of assuming that you did because uh, I remember your song from a couple of weeks ago when it was awesome. So, cool. Cool. All right. Thank you for submitting. And I hope that that's useful and good luck with the release. If you put that out there already, um, I'm sure it's going to do really well. And, uh, you know, we're all being mixing nerds around here, but, uh, I'm sure it's going to resonate with some listeners. So very cool. All right. Uh, let's move on to our next song. And I believe that's called lights out. Let's find out. Yeah, here we go from Juan. So this is lights out. Now we're left for the best parts Where could probably care where we found it A fight on a slip and a dark Hard out And that will think of the best time Where could have the rich down the last slip We drown ourselves to die So I'm going to stop it here just to point something out so everybody can listen as it goes by. Um, this is a case where some more compression might be handy. Uh, specifically, I'm listening to the drums. And you can listen to the volume of the backbeat, the snare, versus the kick. And how once in a while the, the, um, the snare will go from uh, nearly inaudible to jumping out of the mix too far. So let's check that out. Here we go.
I'm going to play the outro again just because why not? Let's see if the streaming numbers drop. <laughs> I love that. That's so cool. The vocals are awesome in the song. Uh, you did a great job on them. Um, the panning on them back and forth and, and just the general vocal production is amazing on that. I loved it. Very, very fun. Um, cool. Yeah. Very nice. ATN. Great job. Or wait, sorry. This isn't ATN. This is, um, sorry, this is Juan. Great job, Juan. Uh, yeah, that, that was awesome. I had a good time on that. Okay, cool. <laughs> super awesome so uh i had a couple things on this and uh more importantly i was having fun listening to it that's that's definitely the most important part of it but uh my main thing was the like i pointed out in the drums i was losing the backbeat and the kick drum uh and then once in a while they would jump out of the mix so just some general control on the drums i think would be good um as far as the style goes like this is a more um punkish kind of thing which I love what you're doing with it. Uh, and tonally, you know, you could, you could do the thing where you carve out a bunch of mid range and get the drums sounding all modern and thick and smacky and all that stuff. Um, but it probably wouldn't be right for the song. This feels like more of a punk song to me. I mean, come on. It's awesome. <laughs> I want that guy just screaming outside of my window all the time. That would be so cool and relaxing. Um, but anyway, like the, um, yeah, the tone of the drums, like I think for doing like a punk garage kind of sound, um, I think the tone that you have going on is working, just watching out for balance things and then general compression to kind of keep them parked in the, in the same spot so that we're not losing the backbeat, but still hearing the kick drum or having the snare just jump out of the speakers once in a while. Um, Juan, let me know if these drums were sampled or not, because uh, some of it I was wondering that if it could be like different trigger levels, if you're triggering samples and maybe the triggers weren't going off and that's why we were losing some things. Uh, sometimes it sounded like the tone of the snare was the same, but it was buried back in the mix. So um, I'll wait to see what you say, if they were samples or not. Uh, okay, and then the other thing for me was the guitar. So you have, um, there's a little bit of a mid-range nose on them, if you will, um, like up... Uh, I'm guessing at frequencies here, but like 3K-ish or something like that. Like there's something, a little bit of an, uh, uh, like a peak at that point that was just kind of like poking out of the mix, poking out of the speakers, sounded a little bit more modern. So that made it feel like it wasn't vibing with the tone of the vocals and the guitars um, and the drum, or sorry, the vocals and the drums. Yeah. So the guitars weren't matching up with the tone of the vocals and the drums. Um, because of this mid-range little poke thing. And then you also have widening on them, which is putting them outside of the stereo field, which for something that's, uh, if you're going for a lo-fi sound, um, having stuff existing way out there is kind of like a production trick over production. So um, I think that that pulled it out of the style a little bit for me too and felt a little distracting. Uh, the other thing is when 
going down to mono now, like there's the argument of like who listens in mono, who cares what it sounds like in mono. It's useful for figuring out the balance of your your sides versus your center punch and all of that too. So if I go down to mono, those guitars cancel out because of your stereo widening. And um, the more important thing to listen for in mono is does the balance of the mix change? So if you only have drums and bass left or if the guitars drop, you know, 6 dB uh, because you go to mono because of the phase cancellation, then it can show you some um, differences that are happening in your balance. So uh, I use that sometimes just to like check out like if things are feeling balanced, I shouldn't have this wildly different mix when I crash it down. So um, how much you care about mono is, is sort of up to you. I use it as a utility thing. I don't worry about what my mixes sound like in mono per se, but if I want to check phase or something like that, I'll definitely use that as a tool. And um, I'm just hearing a lot of stuff that's existing really far outside of the speakers today, so I'm talking a lot about mono, but uh, it's one way to check it. So cool. I hope that that's useful. Um, that was the biggest stuff, and I wanted to recommend a band to you uh, named uh, it's D E S T A A T De Stat. Um, they have a record that was produced by Vance Powell, and some of the other stuff uh, was not produced by him. But uh, like the style is somewhat similar to this, and I would use it as like a sonic reference point and just you know go through the albums and find something that matches closely. But uh, I have a feeling that you'll like that band a lot. So check it out. And one more time, just because. I just want that guy outside of my house just yelling like that all the time. That'd be awesome. <laughs> okay, cool. Thank you for submitting that one. Very cool. Uh, let's see what we got next on the agenda here. This one's going to be from cross.av. Here we go. Hmm, maybe here we go. Uh, oh, there it is. I got it. crose.av. I wrote it wrong. Here we go. Garder sur mon cœur, que ton absence fait saigner. J'aimerais trouver ces mots. Ceux qui disent je t'aime et t'oublier. Pourquoi t'es parti si tôt C'est toi qui m'as tourné le dos. Eh, hey, une caresse sur mon cœur, que ton absence fait saigner. J'aimerais trouver ces mots. Ceux qui disent je t'aime et t'oublier. Pourquoi t'es parti si tôt C'est toi qui m'as tourné le dos. Ça fait des nuits que je rêve. De tes lèvres contre les miennes C'est le bruit de ton silence qui me rend fou Bouteille et cigarette, je repense à nous hey. C'est le bruit de ton silence qui me rend fou Bouteille et cigarette, je repense à nous Ton silence qui me rend fou Bouteille et cigarette, je repense à nous C'est le bruit de ton silence qui me rend fou Bouteille et cigarette, je repense à nous Je t'aime, je te déteste Si seulement tu savais Un jour peut-être Je serais prête à l'admettre C'est difficile d'imaginer Un deuil sans mon cœur Un amour sans douleur une vie de bonheur Mais le temps passe Les peines s'amassent Mais ton absence me fait toujours aussi mal Et ça m'agace Pourquoi t'es parti si tôt C'est toi, toi qui m'as tourné le dos Je t'aime, je te déteste Je t'aime, je t'oublier C'est le bruit de ton silence qui me rend fou Je t'aime, je t'oublier Bouteille et cigarette, je repense à nous C'est le bruit de ton silence qui me rend fou Bouteille et cigarette, je repense à nous
Awesome. Very cool. Very cool. Uh, so it says that you wrote this so you can post it, mixed it, mastered it, and recorded it with yourself and your sister uh, in your bedroom. Billy Eilish style. <laughs> Does the song sound uh, united? Is there something else you noticed? Let me know. Thanks. Awesome. Um, so there's a couple things I got. One of them, my favorite, favorite thing that you did in this mix, uh, you have a sense of height going on which is awesome just great job on that and it's uh i want to say it's happening around here yeah the the vocal that's very auto-tuned uh it has a sense of height it's happening like up here to me um not at the level of the speakers really really cool i love love what you did there uh the main vocal i want to talk about the main vocals for for both of them so let's listen to a little bit of verse one Ceux qui disent je t'aime et t'oublier Pourquoi t'es parti si tôt C'est toi qui m'as tourné le dos Ça fait des nuits que je rêve De tes lèvres contre les miennes C'est le bruit de ton silence qui me rend froid So they're a little bit bright and you're using something to spread them out um, some sort of uh, short delay or phaser like a micro pitch or something like that um, but it's only very top end spreading uh, it's only spreading the very top end of, of whatever's going on, whatever image or plugin you have on there. Uh, I feel like the diffused spreading of the vocal is taking away from the intimacy of it. Although it sounds like it's floating in space, which is really, really cool, um, I feel like the, the power of the vocal or the punch of the vocal has been a little bit diffused. And, um, you know, it's like if you had something that looked like this and it kind of just went like this and didn't feel as like sturdy or powerful. It just kind of like flattened out and, and spread out. So um, that's kind of what I'm hearing in both of the vocals because you have the same effect on the, your sister's vocal as well. Uh, I think maybe a little bit less of that and having a little bit more center definition on the vocal would help um, add to the intimacy of it. And then also just playing with the volume of the vocal. Uh, I love that you had the vocal out in front of the mix. I think that that's a great choice. Um, but the difference on the intro for say uh, is a little too dynamic. The music sounds like dynamically it fits at the beginning, but the vocal sounds like it's poking out of the mix a little bit to me. And then because of the diffuse feeling, it feels a little bit comb filtered, like there's just stuff missing from the content of the vocal. Uh, let's go over to verse two with your sister's vocal. Je t'aime, je te déteste. Si seulement tu savais, un jour peut-être, je serais prête à l'admettre. C'est difficile d'imaginer. Overall, I feel like this, this, a lot of this stuff sounds really, really great. It's just a little bit overblown. Again, like the, the spatial um, effect that you're using is spreading it out a little too thin or a little bit too far. And then I feel like the vocal is missing some low mid content and just some body uh, inside of it to kind of make it, again, just feel more intimate and more like it's close. If something is further away from you, it has less low end, right? Like uh, think about that the next time that you're walking out in public and you hear something that's close to you versus something that's far away, you're going to have more low-end content on something that's closer um, than something that's far away, especially like somebody in conversation with you. Uh, so next time you're at like a party or something, listen to the tone of somebody's voice when they're close to you versus the conversations that you have or you hear happening in the room. And uh, I feel like those are really, really important um, sort of lessons, right? Like when we're out in the real world and we... Uh, just kind of actively listen to what's what's happening around us so it's like i'm at a dinner table with this person the tone of their voice is as such and then if i listen to the general ambience of the room it's higher mid-range it's missing low bottom stuff um, and then how can i apply that when i'm hearing happening in the real world next time i'm sitting at the console how do i use that to achieve the effect that i want um, so here I feel like you're going for a very intimate vocal. You're doing that obviously with volume compression and um, some of the spreading effect that you have. You want it to envelop the listener, but having a, a little bit of a lack of body makes it feel a little bit further away, disjointed, disconnected. Um, so that was that was one thing. And then overall, I feel like it might just be a little bright. Let me check this out. <laughs> Actually, like the, the tone of the hat and everything feels great. And I don't hear any like weird top end stuff happening, you know, up in the super high dog hearing ranges or anything like that. Um, there's no like weird pokey stuff. 
but the essing on the vocals, uh, due to compression, due to the lack of low mids, all of that stuff, the essing's poking out a little bit uh, far to me, and they're a little bit bright. Um, but not bright in the sense like, turn down the high shelf, try adding some low mid in first, unless you're just pushing into a compressor, in which case you'll have to adapt. I uh, hope that that helps. The pumping effect is cool. I, um, it's pumping down on like the downbeat of every measure. There's something in the synth or whatever, and I thought that that was kind of a neat rhythmic choice on there. So very cool. Um, thank you for submitting this, C-Rose, uh, and thanks for being here. It's very cool. Uh, sounds, sounds really great, and I love what you guys are, are writing and all that too. Um, you may be the next Billie Eilish thing over on that side of the pond. Okay, let's see who we have next. Analog uh, from Eval. Here we go. Awesome. Uh, I love your band. This is super cool. I love the, the vibe of this and everything, especially like you go into like the strokes vibe at the end here. It's really cool. 
Um, okay, I'm going to play back this section, and then we're going to talk about a few things, and then I'm going to do the same on the top of the song. Here we go. Okay, so I, um, I'm just going to say to listen uh, for a few things. So listen for, in terms of the balance, right, in, in the mix, spatially, uh, volume-wise, all of that, listen to the elements that, or ask yourselves, I guess, um, while you're listening to the mix, what is it that I'm supposed to be listening to, right? Like, where are you pointing my ear toward? And uh, what is the priority of the instruments? You know, if you were to, like, listen to a little piece of the mix and then decide, like, okay, based on what I heard, are the drums the most important thing? Is the vocal the most important thing? Are they equally as important and then the guitars aren't as important? Or are the guitars the most important thing? Um, but you're giving information to the listener about what's important in the track. So let's listen and see what we got here. So on this section right here, let me listen. The order of importance would be guitar, drums, vocal, or potentially guitar, drums, and vocal together. Um, but the guitar, because it's pointing out or um, jumping out of the speaker, pointing out a little bit, uh, it's telling me that I should be paying attention to it more than anything else, more than the vocal, etc. Uh, so if that's the intention, that's okay. The floor tom almost feels as important as the guitar because of its volume. So listen just a little more. Hold on in some time, nothing but hanging out. Now, if, uh, if I was feeling like the vocal was the most important part of this and I was mixing this, I would know, okay, the guitars and the floor drum or the floor tom need to come down a little bit and the vocal needs to come forward, so a little louder. Uh, so that's the kind of stuff that, that I'm thinking about when I'm going through this. This also makes it a matter of taste, right? So to me, the, the stories in the vocal, I want to hear what's going on in the vocal. I don't think the guitar is more important than the vocal, so I would have it recessed just to tear behind it, um, even for a track like this. Now, on the louder sections, I might use the, the energy of the guitars to pull the vocal back and make it feel more energetic because it's harder to hear the vocal and I have to lean into them. But I was attached to the vocal prior to, so contrast from section to section. Um, let's listen to a little bit of the beginning here. Now there I'm being told that the vocal is the most important thing. Uh, the vocal feels good to me right here. Tonally, it feels a little bit nasally, like it's missing some body, some low mid, um, but for the style it might be okay too. So uh, that was the biggest thing that I kind of wanted to point out about this one. Um, I don't think I really have much else. It was mostly like a balancing who's important uh, and then general tone is, is kind of song dependent on there. Hope that that's useful. Um, but. Mostly, I'm, I'm giving that style of comment because uh, you said, Hi, this is a song I recorded with uh, last October with my band. The more I listen to it, the more I'm lost on what I should do to improve things. Um, so one more thing to kind of go off the rails for a second here. Um, if I get to that point in the mix, because it happens on every mix, uh, you can just kind of get to this point where you're like, what else do I do? I feel like I'm spinning my wheels. Um, at some point, you might even be just tired of mixing the song. Like You just kind of have that feeling of like, just kind of want this to be over. I'm not like, I don't have anything exciting to give to it. I feel like it needs something, but I can't put my finger on it. I think I'm done. You know, you might get to that point, which is kind of where you're at. I'm lost on what I should do to improve things. Instead of saying the mix is done, you're saying I'm lost on what I should do to improve things. So you feel like something's lacking uh, is what I'm extrapolating from your text. But when I get to this point in the mix, if I'm not feeling it, and I also feel done, I'll go to the vocal or to the lyric or to the general vibe of the song and I'll start asking myself like, okay, who's the most important element throughout the entire song? Where's, like, what was the production's intent? Is it the beat of the song, the vocal, the story of the song, the lyrics, what is it? 
And then I'll try to connect myself to that. And then I'll ask, like, is it a happy song? Is it an angry song? Is it an energetic song? Where should it be? Um, it, am I hitting those points? Like, you should be asking yourself these questions all the way from hearing the rough mix. But um, if I'm feeling lost in the mix, I'll start asking them again. It's like, back to the fundamentals. What's important? What, again, if it's supposed to be a loud garage rock thing, that tells me where the guitar should be. It tells me what they should feel like. Um, so case in point, I guess, uh, just being like, if you listen to this and you ask yourself those questions and while you're going through, if you're saying like the vocal is the most important thing, but I can't really hear it, or it's supposed to be, um, a little bit more full bodied, uh, to, to feel intimate or whatever, that'll tell you what to kind of do next. And I find, um, when I do get to that point of like, I don't know what else to do with this. If I just ask myself those questions again, I'll start feeling inspired again too, because it's, again, it goes back to like more of a musical approach to mixing instead of like a technical one of like, is it too bright? Is it too dark? Instead, I'm thinking about like, what is the song asking me to do? What's it about? Uh, and letting those kinds of um, thoughts drive the mix decision. So hope that that helps off of my soapbox. Okay. Um, Hope that's useful, ATN. Thank you for submitting very much. Uh, really cool. Nate Williams said he loved the room on the guitar sound in the intro. There you go. All right. Next one is from Smoke and Fudo called The Wild Ones. Let's see. All right. Thanks for being here, Smoking. Always good to see you. Here we go. Guys, everybody in the chat, I have a, a fun exercise. Maybe you'll join me on this. Um, ask yourself some questions here. So like, what are the main important elements of this mix as we listen down to it? What's the story? How should it feel? Is it energetic? Is it quiet? Is it subdued? Should it be happy, sad? All of these things close, far. Um, ask yourself as you're listening to this. And then by the end of the song, ask yourself if it's hitting on those notes. So here we go. Imagine that you're hearing the rough for the first time and you're about to mix this song. What would you write on your sheet of paper saying, this is the most important thing. This is uh, the emotion of the song. The central driver is the vocal or the drums, etc." Uh, here we go. The way that you raise your hand They'll never know just who you are So keep your
keep your eyes on mine I know where you're coming from Don't be afraid And go ahead and fall in love Run with the wild ones There's so much you haven't done It's not too late Awesome. Cool. Um, Mirko, thank you. Mirko is smoking Fudo, as noted in his comment here. Um, so very cool. Uh, yeah, so it says that you pulled up the old mix project. Um, so we'll talk about that in a minute. And uh, everybody who played my game, uh, what did you feel like the main drivers of this song should be. So if you were listening to it as a rough mix and you were deciding before going in to touch anything, before putting your fingers on the faders, if you were like, what is the emotion of this song? What's the picture that it paints? What do I want to do with this mix? Um, what did you come up with? Let me know in the chat. Uh, this song is amazing. I, I really love this. Uh, Smoking, did you get this? Was this a multi-track from another site? Um, or did you, did you work on this one? This is awesome. Very, very cool. Um, so my feelings are, uh, what I came up with, I'm going to give you guys another second to write, write down. Uh, so Martin, for the sake of the exercise, wrote energetic, full of hope. The vocal should be a little bit more in front, tame down the drums, um, the kick and snare, and maybe my cheap headphones boost the bass. <laughs> awesome. Okay. So the first part of what you wrote is, uh, what the most important thing to me is, is like that, um, energetic, full of hope. Um, uh, Mobley says, uh, cool song arrangements and performances. I'm wondering if your monitoring is favoring your vocal, uh, cause you bring, causing you to bring the drums and guitars forward. Right. Okay. So are you hearing the vocal too far forward, which is making you want to increase the volume of those. Tony writes so much emotion, smoke and food. well done. Guitar at the left is maybe too much, especially in the first minute for the whole song. Um, distracted. Isomatic says the vocals are the most important thing for him. Uh, okay, so um, my thoughts for this were uh, the picture that I see is like, especially on these driving choruses and everything, and like the um, the uh, the hit section here. So. If we listen to the to the song and not the mix. The picture to me is I'm driving a convertible toward the sunset on a desert road and I'm going full speed and it's just getting the hell out of town. Don't be afraid. Go ahead and fall in love. Run with the wild one. It's so much you haven't done. It's not yeah, beautiful song. Um, so if if that's the picture that I have, then what do I want to do to enforce that? I want I want things to not sound close to me. I want this to feel vast and huge and, and big. Um, not necessarily like a reverb chamber. I want it to feel like I'm outside driving, uh, you know, 120 miles an hour. Not that I'd ever do that, Mom. But anyway, <laughs> that's what I want it to feel like. So uh what are some things that you could do to make it make that happen um the drums right now the snare feels very close to me the vocal feels um like it's recessed a little bit uh i want to hear those words and and the uh performance of his vocal because it's so well done um alexandre says uh it makes you feel lonely but hopeful absolutely yeah driving by yourself out into the <laughs> into the desert um cool yeah it's such a great song uh so yeah, things should probably feel a little bit more distant, not super close to me. Um, again, that like thought of uh, what what's close, what's far. If the drums are very loud and have a ton of punch, they're going to feel close to me. Uh, you still want to have some center punch in your mix and all that and have it be a little dynamic, but it doesn't need to be jumping forward in the speaker all the time and jumping out to, uh, to my face. So that could be a little bit more recessed. The guitar should feel nice and spacious, uh, reverb, all of that thing. Um, the vocals, like the tone of the mix, there shouldn't be things leaning forward and poking out at me. Uh, the vocal as well, it shouldn't be an up and in, you know, in my face vocal. It should be like kind of a easy to hear, but it should be 
vast and part of the landscape, if that makes sense. Uh, so those are the things that, um, those are all the thoughts I would have had if I heard this as the rough mix and I was about to start mixing it. And then I would approach the song from that place of uh, knowing where I want things to sit and how I want it to feel. And those would influence my, my EQ decisions, my compression decisions, all of that stuff. Um, and basically I've mixed the song in my head before I put my hands on the faders. Hopefully that makes it some sort of sense. I just went on a long rant. Uh, Smogan says, I got the multi-track, really like the song, and uh, it's really challenging to make a good balance in vibes. Yeah, this one would be very, very hard because um, especially if you were going for the picture that I see of like the driving out in the landscape thing, how do you create that? So just uh, taking a second to think about those things, like what does something like that sound like? How close are things? How far are they? And then what decisions can I do to make it feel that way so um yeah in this mix i just kind of feel like things are a little bit close to me um all of that so i hope i hope that that's useful smoking if um if you have something more specific uh like more specific things that you're kind of struggling with let me know but um you also said that you started it from an old mix project um if you're not tired of the song which uh hopefully you're not because it's a great song <laughs> um i would start this from scratch and uh, try again, just like asking yourself some questions. So first of all, like what are the main drivers? What's the vibe of the song? Um, and writing those things down and then going through and um, you know, actually doing your mix. So I hope that that's useful. Uh, I had, at one point I added like a list of questions that I asked myself um, and I'm looking for it now, but I don't, it's not coming up very easily. So I might have to, talk about it some other time uh yeah we'll come back to it another day uh but yeah come up with some questions to ask yourself about every mix it's a very handy tool more on that later uh oh alexandra says do you have references or other songs in mind when you mix um i do uh use references or other songs when um like, for example, on this one, I might try to think of another song that feels this way and then listen to that and see if it gives any inspiration. Um, we mentioned earlier Tom Petty's Wildflowers when we were talking about bright mixes that work. Uh, that's sort of like in the back of my mind. I know that that's a bright record. So if I'm struggling with like, is my mix too bright? I'll go back and be like, what's another bright record? Like, this feels like it should be bright. So what's another bright record so I can A, B it? I'll go back and listen to uh, like Wildflowers and be like, okay. Here's like a point of reference. Um, how is mine comparing to this? I also have um, specific references that I'll use for different things. Like there's an artist named Sohn, S-O-H-N. It's like John, but with an S instead of a J. Uh, there's a song called Signal, where I know that in the beginning of that song, the kick drum is slightly to the right. One of the kick drums, there's two kick drums. One of them slightly to the right. And the cross stick that's happening is dead center up the middle and bone dry uh so i'll use that um to check a room you know if i'm in a room that i don't know yet i'll put that track up and be like does that kick appear where i know it should appear slightly to the right am i hearing reverb in the room because that cross stick is like a perfect little blast of energy in the room where i can actually hear it excite the room and all that um okay awesome awesome cool good luck smoking i hope to hear another mix of this uh great job Cool. All right. Uh, next one up is Thomas Kramer, and I believe that's our last one for the day. So here we go. From the top. I'm 
Okay, I'm going to give my comments here uh, so that we can listen to the rest of the song um, with those in mind. Uh, so uh, one very cool. So he says, hi, Pyramix community. Here's another project I completed together with my 10-year-old daughter. I created a cover version of the track uh, by the German band and let my daughter sing to it. Any feedback on what to improve on instrumental and vocals? I know the tuning's a bit audible here and there. It's highly appreciated. Um, I was going to say watch the tuning in the very beginning. I think there might be a spot, but uh, general overall tone. One, I think this is awesome that you do this with your 10-year-old. That's so cool. Keep doing this. Uh, okay, so mix-wise, the vocal is very far forward and a little bright, um, very close to me, and the snare drum is just right behind her. And then about 10 feet back behind that, I have the rest of the mix as a flat wall. So everything feels very compressed back there and the snare is poking out and the vocal is poking out in front of that. So that's the balance stuff I hear. The piano is, um, if you listen to the compression on the piano, the dynamics are all the same as though like the MIDI was all quantized velocity wise at the same volume and it doesn't move forward or backward. There's no like punch to it. It's just kind of there and flat in the brick wall, um, much like the strings. So they all just kind of hang out on the same plane back there. Um, having some dynamic and letting some of those things breathe and, and push a little bit more, not so much that they jump out of the mix here and there, but um, just so that they have a little bit of transient to them, um, I feel like could, could help make this feel a little bit more natural. Same thing with the vocal too. It feels a little bit over compressed to the point where it's just kind of like a flat thing. There's no difference in volume at all. It's just kind of all maintained and flattened out so that um, when it goes louder in volume, it doesn't come forward. That's a really good uh, way of hearing compression too, is um, when you listen to something that needs to be compressed, you'll have something quiet and then it'll jump out of the speakers. The volume will go up so high that it feels like it jumps out of the speakers toward you and you need that to be controlled. So you're at, you have two choices. You can throw a compressor on it or you can automate it. Um, obviously, like we're talking about general vocal compression here. So you have a compressor on it. You want that vocal to stay parked, but you don't want it to be um, completely flat and just always in your face unless the style calls for it. In this case, I think that the vocal is a little bit more of a natural part and could stand to breathe a little bit more. Same thing with the piano and the... Um, uh, the strings that are all happening in the back and whatever bass instrument is going on, same idea. Um, so now let's listen to um, front to back depth, thinking about uh, where is the vocal, where is the snare drum, where is everything else, and do those things move and breathe dynamically. Here we go. Yeah, so um, kind of apparent there, too, at the end when the piano is by itself. So just watch out for dynamics on it. Um, somebody said the vocal could use some dressing. So, like, uh, yeah, I, I would agree. The vocal feels a little bit dry, like it could just use a little bit of effect to it uh, to help it sit in the mix as well. Um, I, I know on, on tracks like this, especially, like, given the situation of, like, having your 10-year-old daughter on it, um, you want want it to be a thing... Uh, where it feels like a karaoke mix and you want the vocal to just be 100% on top like everybody we're listening to her sing and that's totally cool and uh, I would say that this accomplishes that if that's the goal on it too um, yeah right now it, it kind of feels like how karaoke sounds with how far out the vocal is not in a bad um, like that's not a knock in terms of like how karaoke sounds or is perceived but if you were doing karaoke live you'd have the vocals way on top of the music because all that anybody wants to do is like hear their friends sing right um so that's kind of how this mix feels to me is like we just want to listen to her um so 
then mission accomplished if so if if you want to make it feel like a more produced live thing like she's in the track um some of the stuff that we talked about so i hope that that is useful um good to see you sr1b i see you in there um jesse said i'm just blown away these are all amazing thanks for sharing guys absolutely like all the songs on here as always are are great um this is it's so cool to see what you guys do every week uh thank you for for tuning in everybody thank you for submitting music if you had a mix on here uh i had a blast and um i hope that you found uh my comments useful make sure you check the youtube chat for for the comments of the community and stay tuned to your track on mix tank as i'm sure more people will be dropping comments on the timeline as a reminder we have a new joe ciccarelli video this friday mixing the districts the song is called do it over you can listen to it before the video drops on Friday. Uh, the multi-tracks will be available for that one too, so you guys could mix it and put it up on Mix Tank, and we could talk about it in two weeks on Monday at 2.30 p.m. when I come back for the next Mix Tank. So looking forward to seeing you guys then, and thank you so much for watching. We'll see you guys next time.